Ms. Burke, um, I, can we um, take you back on what Mr. Ayers brought up, which is modification, and, and what are your thoughts? Um, you can comment on what, uh, some, what some of the prior commenters have said, but with respect to video game consoles in particular, do you see a need for modification? I'm not sure I, I, that was the, I'm not sure if that's part of what public knowledge is, is supporting with respect to video game consoles um, for this exemption. Yeah, so with respect to modification, to the extent that you might need to modify the software in order to like repair or relock the optical drive once it comes, like once you change it out, I think that modification would be potentially necessary depending on what the anti-circumvention technology ends up doing. I know like um, as an analogy, there are some times when you might need to reprogram like um, in, a, in like the software, like how, what the function of a button is. Um, and so that might require modification, but in terms of like modification for a functional purpose, not modification to allow you to play pirated DVDs. And um, I just wanna address that concern there that somehow allowing these, um, you know, changing out the optical drive and being able to repair that optical drive is gonna jeopardize the security of the whole system. The lock that pairs an optical drive to the motherboard exists on the um, daughter board connection between the two devices. And it's my understanding that unlocking that so that you can pair a new optical drive is not going to then jeopardize the whole ecosystem of the video game console and its security protocols. Um, so I think that that's something that's particularly relevant here since this idea that all of a sudden changing out an optical drive is going to make it easier to pirate content, it just doesn't um, seem like that works within the realities of how these systems are constructed.